Hello and welcome South African booksellers and friends to the Macmillan Children's Book January to June 2021 Highlights presentation. Uh, I'm Charlotte Cross, I'm South Africa Sales Manager for Panmac UK and on behalf of myself and all my colleagues here today, um, I just want to welcome you to this virtual mini conference. We are very, very sad not to be with you in person today, uh, drinking tea, eating cake and talking about books. Um, I'm new to PanMac, so I haven't yet had the pleasure of going to your conference, but my colleagues have told me that it is genuinely the highlight of their annual calendar. So rest assured, we will be heading back to your shores literally as soon as our borders open again, I guess. Um, in the meantime, please do grab a hot drink and a snack while for the next half an hour, we run you through our biggest titles for the next six months. To try to keep you on your toes, uh, we've also added a competition to our conference this year. Uh, as you know, Julia Donaldson and the Gruffalo is our very biggest brand at Macmillan Children's Books. So much so that our staff members have been known to nick off with Gruffalo merch over the years to put in their houses. So the first person to spot the Gruffalo lurking in the background uh, of one of our frames will win a chocolate prize uh, to be sent to your house or office. Um, when you spot it, uh, just email me at this email address um, and the first person to tell me the name of the presenter who was stolen the Gruffalo uh, will win the prize. Anyway, without much further ado, let's kick off with Campbell. Over to you, Barry. Hi everyone, so I'm Barry and I'm the Publishing Director of Preschool and it's really nice to come along today and just share some of our books with you. So just to fill you in, I look after two key areas. The first is our Campbell list of interactive books for very young children, which I'm sure you know well. And the second area is a new preschool list, which in terms of target age group is positioned between Campbell and Macmillan's picture books. So it's a bridge between the two and it rests on values very similar to Campbell, but just one stage up. So let's crack on and look at what's on offer first from Campbell. And first up, we have a series that I'm sure you already know. It's Little Big Feelings, our collection of books on emotional intelligence for early years children. Today's new titles are on the topics of being patient and saying sorry. Each title goes into the core emotions of the topic in a way that preschoolers will relate to, while also making it easy for parents to deliver the take-home advice, all of which is provided by Dr Janet Rose, our go-to early years practitioner. Of course, these are Campbell books, so while the goal might be developing emotional intelligence, that doesn't mean they can't be fun along the way. Children will love lifting the flaps, turning the wheels and using the sliding scale to reflect the way they feel. There's also a wealth of gentle storytelling in the scenarios that illustrate the different emotions. Best of all, as you'll hopefully have seen in the previous titles, these two new books provide a brilliant tool for simply getting kids talking about how they feel. Whether it's through the storylines, the illustrations or the interactive elements, the books provide many ways to start that all-important first conversation. It's a series we really believe in, and I'm sure you'll be glad to hear that there are more titles on the way. So next after those, we have uh, two more titles in our hugely successful busy book series, and both are on the perennial pop perennially popular, that's quite hard to say, topic of wild animals. The books feature our best-selling push, pull and slide mechanisms, which help toddlers to develop fine motor skills while also having a rollicking good time engaging with all these magnificent wild creatures. Both stories are in rhyme and they take children on an adventure. So in Busy Safari, we're riding in a four by four past elephants, cheetah, rhino, hippos, and we worked closely with our South African colleagues to ensure that we got the important details right in the book. And Busy Jungle is equally playful with the mechanisms making parrots pop up, orangutans swing and crocodiles snap. There's lots of gentle early learning content to be found here as little ones explore the different environments and discover the creatures who live there. For extra value, there are questions asked about the scenes and a little character to spot on every spread. 
We're really excited to be adding to this global best-selling series with over 4 million copies sold in 26 languages. And the last one from me is a launch title from the new preschool list that I mentioned earlier. It's Frog Goes on Holiday, and it's the first of two titles from the very talented Carly Gledhill. We acquired the books to snap up Carly as a fresh new talent for Macmillan, and we're really delighted to have her on the list. So Frog Goes on Holiday is a novelty paperback. It's got sturdy pages to boost the confidence of young readers. And toddlers will really delight in following Frog's adventures through the pages with their fingers, all the while developing essential pre-reading skills. It truly is learning through play. The book takes a fresh look at a classic preschool theme found in the likes of Spot's First Walk by Eric Hill, in which a young character ventures out into the world, encounters a tiny bit of peril and then returns to the safety of home. But Carly has brought so much more to the formula. There's a soft learning element in the form of prepositions as Frog goes up, down, in, out and around. There are shaped pages to turn and die cut holes to peep through as well. And Carly's distinctive colourful artwork gives Curious Tots lots and lots to spot. All in all, this book offers a highly engaging narrative world that parent and child will simply want to return to again and again. And I cannot wait to see a finished copy. Anyway, that's it from me. So I'm going to pass you over now so that we can look at some Julia Donaldson titles. Thanks, Barry. Um, so I'm delighted to talk to you through the to talk you through the Julia Donaldson publishing for this period. And don't worry, Julia has been very busy writing and naturally performing. Um, for anyone who missed it, please do head over to the Gruffalo Facebook page where you will see Julia and her husband doing dramatic performances of her books in a Julia Donaldson and Friends online broadcast series, including some special appearances from her famous illustrators. She started doing these broadcasts in the first lockdown in 2020, and they proved to be so popular that they're bringing them back for 2021, one per week, every Thursday at 4 p.m. UK time. Um, and they are just such brilliant resources and brilliant at showing the natural rhyming patterns of the stories that make her book so great for kids. Um, the Woolly Bear Caterpillar. So a new Do Julia Donaldson is always something to get excited about, but especially when we're pairing her with a brand new award-winning illustrator for a retelling of a classic children's story. The Woolly Bear Caterpillar is a twist on the tale of the ugly duckling. Crawling through the garden, the little Woolly Bear Caterpillar wonders what kind of moth she will become. The other caterpillars are bonny and bright, stunning and smart, but not kind. They laugh at the small, plain Woolly Bear. There is one thing that they are sure of, Woolly Bear could never be as beautiful as them, but could one little caterpillar be about to undergo a truly terrific transformation? This is the classic story of evolution, transformation, not judging others and finding your place and flourishing. The illustrations are beautiful and they are by Yuval Zoma, whose name you may well be familiar with. Um, his best-selling uh, Big Book of series by Thames and Hudson is internationally renowned and translated into 25 languages. And he has won and been shortlisted for numerous awards, including the UK LA Book Awards, the English Association's Non-Fiction Award, and the Made for Mums Award. Another exciting feature of this brilliant picture book is that it has a little mini non-fiction book inside with facts and activities uh, written by a nature expert, making this beautiful book even more perfect for gifting. So then next up, we have one of our Julia favorites, Rhyming Rabbit. Um, we are publishing a celebratory 10th anniversary paperback edition with previously unseen artwork from illustrator Lydia Monks and a special letter from author Julia Donaldson. This is a great gift for Easter and a brilliant milestone to celebrate this book that has sold over half a million copies to date. And we are also reissuing the sticker book alongside. What the Ladybird Heard. So we are reissuing four titles in this series with a new cover design to increase series recognition and appeal to new audiences. 
This is one of Julia's very biggest series with everyone's favorite small detective. Um, and we've sold over 4 million copies worldwide. We're also releasing these editions with, uh, we're also re reissuing a secondary edition with an audio CD of the story read by uh, actor and performer Alexander Armstrong. And then the hospital dog. So this is the paperback edition release and paperback and CD edition release. Um, we published the hardback at the end of last year. And for anyone who missed it, this is the same pairing of author and illustrator as the best-selling detective dog. And it's becoming this kind of lovely connected series about dogs with jobs. Um, so in this book, The Hospital Dog, um, this the case is that he is an emotional support dog that has a job visiting the local children's hospital. The core of this story is very much reassurance in scary times. Um, and you know the kindness of dogs and also reciprocal kindness. He looks after them and they look after him vice versa when he gets himself into a bit of a spot uh, during the story. It's a lovely rhyming picture book for, um, it's a lovely rhyming picture book and it's especially perfect for these scary times where I think we all need a little bit of reassurance. The audio CD um, has the story being read by actress and singer Dame Floella Benjamin. And then we're into picture books. So kicking off with The Bookshop Cat, which if there is a picture book more perfect for booksellers, I don't know what it is. Um, this is the second book from Taiwanese author illustrator Cindy Woom. Um, her first book was published by Frankus Lincoln in 2018 and was shortlisted for the Klaus Flug Prize. Um, she is a really exciting new talent and was a highlighted illustrator, uh, highlighted illustrator at Bologna Book Fair around her first book. The bookshop cat. Um, the bookshop cat loves his job at the children's bookshop. Another animal with a job. There's a theme emerging um, where he spends his time reading, purring and recommending his favorite books to all the children that come into the shop. But one day disaster strikes. The bookshop is flooded and the children stop coming to visit. With a bit of help from his family and friends, the bookshop cat comes up with a brilliant plan to bring the children's bookshop back to life. The Bookshop Cat is the ultimate love letter to independent bookstores and, a, and passionate booksellers and readers. Set in a bookshop, it is the perfect tribute to book lovers everywhere. And now on to Sometimes I'm Curious. Hello, I'm Rachel Graves. I'm the International Sales Director for Macmillan Children's Books. And it is lovely almost to see you. And I can't tell you how much I'm missing you all. Sometimes I am furious, actually true, as well as being the title of this book. This is a wonderful and genuinely hilarious exploration of the common problem of toddler rage. It's written by the very talented Tim Knapman and illustrated by Joe Berger, and they are a best-selling duo who have also created a little video for the story, which is in your pack. Um, and this book really explores that feeling of being a small child when the world just seems very unfair and things that would seem small to an adult are really genuinely momentous to small children. So this explores that feeling of frustration when perhaps you encounter someone who will not share or calamity. You drop your ice cream and you are furious and enraged. And this book really looks at that in a very relatable and friendly way, as well as having lots of humour. And it makes practical and very positive suggestions about how you can address those things that have happened to you and make yourself feel a little bit better. So as well as feeling better, you also feel a bit more in control. So it might be by singing a happy song or taking some deep and calming breaths or having a cuddle with somebody that you love or things to make you feel a bit happier. Then we have The Dragon Who Didn't Like Fire by the impossibly talented Gemma Marino. This is a follow on title from The Crocodile Who Didn't Like Water and it's a really charming and funny story all about acceptance and difference and family love um, and it's about a little dragon and she doesn't like fire she doesn't really like flying and she's not very good at it yet. Two things that you might think are fairly fundamental to being a dragon. 
she's desperate to learn to fly because she wants to make her dad proud. It's really empathetic and it's full of heart. And we come to understand that perhaps this little dragon is something other entirely, but she is also perfect and just right, just as she is, and loved entirely. Moving on to the wonderful Emily Gravett, too much stuff. And I know that you've seen the hardback. So just a reminder that this is really a hilarious story about the cycle of acquisition and materialism and the perils of getting and keeping too much stuff. And the perils are hilarious and just perilous enough. Um, it's a rhyming story. It features our favourite cast of characters from Tidy. And it just reminds us of the reminds us of the really important things in life. So family and community and helping each other out. And there is a an excellent and very timely message about upcycling, like upcycling and recycling that is very on message. Um, and then segueing. I mean, seamlessly from that, another book illustrated by the award-winning Emily Gravett, but this time written by My Michael Morpurgo. And I know what an extraordinary gift of a storytelling duo we are giving you. Um, and this is a song of gladness. It is a very personal story for Michael, and he does actually feature at the very beginning of the book. And at the very beginning of the book, he's sad. And he's sad and the blackbird notices his sadness and the blackbird has an amazing idea. And it's such an amazing idea that the blackbird shares this idea with all of the other animals. So we, the reader and the child reader, we get to explore and go on this wondrous journey throughout the natural world meeting all of the animals within it and starting to understand our connection with the natural world and the rightness of our place within it. As the blackbird and all of the animals share this wonderful idea which is a song of gladness and the song of gladness is a call and it's a call to all of us to cherish and care for our world. We have a little note from Michael at the end of the book as well explaining why he's written it and why it's so important to him. The book is absolutely beautiful, as you would expect. It's meaningful and it's deeply moving. And then, changing the tempo a little bit, we have Spaghetti Hunters by Morag Hood, again an award-winning author illustrator. And I know you know this from the hardback, so I won't go on about it too much, but just to say this is the most ridiculous and silly book that I have ever come across. It is a personal favorite of many of us in the team. It has some important and useful messages about home cooking and understanding where our food comes from. Spaghetti, quite literally, does not grow on trees. Um, and also how it's important to understand that even if people tell us something with an enormous amount of confidence, they are not necessarily to be believed. That does not go for salespeople, we are always to be believed. It also features two of my top favorite characters in Duck, Calm and Stoic, taking respite in a teapot for, for some quiet time, and Tiny Horse, who knows everything. Hi there. Uh, I agree. Spaghetti Hunters, I think, is probably the best book ever published. Um, my name is Leanne and I work in the international sales team and I'm going to talk to you about a few middle grade books. So starting with investigators, they're alligators and they're also investigators. This series is laugh out loud funny and perfect for emerging readers. It is in paperback and suitable for readers from seven to nine years old. Investigators is written and illustrated by John Patrick Green, and it's a delightful full color graphic novel, perfect for fans of Dogman, Captain Underpants, or Diary of a Wimpy Kid. In this book, we meet Mango and Brash, our two lead investigators, who use toilet-based travel techniques to go undercover and solve the case. On their first mission together, they have not one, but two mysteries to solve. With a book a season, Investigators has brilliant series momentum. We have another paperback coming out in September. 
This book is originally published out of the US and author illustrator John Green has worked for the likes of Nickelodeon, DreamWorks and DC Comics. Kids find these books totally addictive and can't wait to read the next one. On to Max and the Midnights. Are you in need of a hero? Then it's Max to the rescue. This is the second book in the Laugh Out Loud series from the best-selling author of the Big Nate books. Accessible and funny, this is highly illustrated and integrated with comic book style black and white pictures. This series has garnered fantastic peer reviews from the likes of Jeff Kinney and Dave Pilkey and is perfectly positioned as a commercial must read middle grade series for reluctant readers. Our central character Max is actually female. So feminist and topical, Max is determined to go against the odds and become a knight, despite the fact that girls are not allowed to. With his trademark comic book style illustrations, Lincoln Purse brings adventure, riotous fun, and medieval silliness in Max and the Midnight's Battle of the Bodkins. The first Max and the Midnight books was a New York Times bestseller, and it actually sold over 100,000 copies in its first year. Author Lincoln Purse is a New York Times bestselling author and cartoonist. The author's comic strip Big Nate, featuring the adventures of an irrepressible sixth grader, appears in over 400 newspapers worldwide. His illustrated novels based on that strip have sold over 16 million copies. And next we have Aziz's Secret Fairy Door. Um, I'm really excited to present this new series. This is the first book in a young, inclusive magical adventure series inspired by world mythology from debut author Lola Moreo. This book is perfect for young readers of six to eight, and it is gorgeously illustrated and black and white throughout. So a little bit about the plot. In this book, young Aziza lives with her mom, dad, and older brother in a city apartment. And like many little girls, Aziza loves fairies. Upon her birthday, the gift of a fairy door ultimately leads her into a magical kingdom and straight into an enchanted adventure. There are many characters throughout this tale who are inspired from fairies from West African and Persian folk tales, and also based on South African mythology. This book is commercial and inclusive and is part of a five book fiction series combining fairies, friendship, sass and adventure, featuring a wonderful diverse cast of characters. There's a real gap in the children's fiction market for a young black heroine, and we are confident that this is the book to fill that gap. Uh, at MCB and McMill, we absolutely love finding and developing new talent, and this is a fantastic debut from this author illustrator team. And just to say the author uh, is, is especially willing and able to do PR or promote in any way that you would like. Um, this series is packed with mischief, friendship, and magic, and it's pure escapism. It is perfect for fans of Isadora Moon, Rainbow Magic, and Amelia Fang's younger sisters. Thank you. Hello, I'm Kate and I'm a senior editor on the MCB Fiction and Nonfiction list. Um, and I'm delighted to be telling you about Remesa, which is a fresh and funny and empowering take on traditional fairy tales by debut author Radia Hafiza. It features retellings of Rapunzel, Rapunzel sorry, Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty, putting brown girls at the forefront of these stories and is set in the magical version of South Asia. We start off with Remesa, a retelling of Rapunzel, where a girl trapped in a tower, rather than letting down her long hair, lets down her hijab in order to escape. And along the way, she meets and teams up with Cinderella and Sleeping Sara. Radia cleverly weaves together these three stories, bringing a fresh structural twist to these fairy tales, which are all about being true to yourself, sisterhood, and dreaming big. And it's perfect for fans of Sophie Anderson and Catherine Rundell. Remesa is a magical celebration of feminism and Islamic culture that will resonate with readers from all backgrounds. It is a fully illustrated package with gorgeous black and white integrated lineup by Rada El Terni. And with lyrical yet accessible language, Radia is an incredibly exciting new middle grade voice who wants to show young readers that fairy tales can be for everyone. Hi, I'm Poppy. I'm also on the international sales team, uh, and this is The Swallow's Flight. This is a companion novel to the award-winning The Skylark's War from the incredible Hilary McKay and featuring the next generation of characters and a return from Clary and Rupert. This is a story of hope, friendship and family set on opposite sides of a devastating conflict. 
Eric and Hans admire swallows over the rooftops of Berlin, little thinking that one day they will be flying above England, risking their lives in a war they both detest. Ruby and Kate, great friends despite their differences, find themselves racing towards a danger that neither of them could possibly have imagined. These four ordinary lives are connected by extraordinary circumstances. It is a really moving and beautiful story about coming of age amidst the chaos and conflict of World War II and a great addition to the world created in Skylark's War. How to be a hero. This is an exciting, adventure-filled first installment for Cat Weldon's trilogy. In it, we meet Lotta, a failing Valkyrie in training, and Whetstone, a no-good Viking thief in search of glory and a magic talking cup. After a case of mistaken identity, these two find themselves on a quest to regain their heroic status and save the Nine Worlds from the trickster god Loki's plans for chaos. Desperate to prove themselves, this story asks what it means to be a hero and how to be brave. It is hilarious, fast-paced, and packed full of adventure. This tale is accompanied by Katie Keir's stunning illustrations and an accessible pack with maps, character guides, and an interactive quest, which really brings this world to life. It's perfect for fans of How to Train Your Dragon and a great introduction into Norse mythology. Thank you. Thanks, Poppy. Um, so now we're on to Noah's Gold. Uh, so this is another brilliantly entertaining and thought-provoking book by the best-selling and multi-award winning author of Millions and Cosmic. In Noah's Gold, 11-year-old Noah sneaks along on his big sister's geography field trip. Great idea, right? No. Uh, pretty quickly, everything goes wrong for poor Noah, so much so that he ends up with six kids marooned on an uninhabited island. Hungry, teacher vanished, and phones not working. Pretty all-round disastrous. Um, that is until Noah discovers a treasure map and the, go and the gang go in search of gold. This is brilliantly funny, escapist, and is already garnering big name fans. From David Williams, who says, this is brilliantly entertaining and thought provoking, I am in total awe, to Hilary McKay, who called it proper, sparkly, witty, enticing storytelling, it's perfect. We're releasing in hardback and trade paperback with full illustrations throughout, perfect for readers age nine plus. Vega Jane and the Maze of Monsters by David Baldacci. So we are re-releasing this series by David, completely retitling, re-editing and re-aging, all with David's complete support and agreement. Um, where these were originally pitched as more YA, we have reworked these for the middle grade reader, cutting around 40,000 words, taking out any mature content and adjusting the language for the middle grade reader. We've also added illustrations by Tomislav Tomic to firmly place this in the age nine plus range. Um, these new iterations are perfect for fans of the Percy Jackson books and Maze of Monsters is the second book in a series of four with the first book having just published this past January. This is a really, really exciting opportunity. David Baldacci is one of the biggest author brands in the world and he will have that brand recognition with parents um, as well as pace and thrills in the story that are sure to be a, a hit with kids as well. Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Boy by Emmanuel Acco. So this is an engaging children's book whose aim is opening a dialogue about systemic racism, inspired by Emmanuel Acco's viral video series and New York Times best-selling adult book, Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man. Emmanuel Akko is a Fox Sports analyst and host and producer of Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man, which is a web series opening a dialogue about racism. In 2019, Forbes listed Akko as a 30 under 30 honoree, recognizing him for his success as the youngest national football analyst for ESPN. In this book, Akko takes a set of widely asked questions about race that white and non-black children are seldom brave enough to ask and lays out the answers in a digestible way that addresses the racial divide for young generations. The main purpose here is that these conversations need to be had if we are ever going to address systemic racism, including, if not especially, with our children, so that they don't absorb any of the toxic lessons or behaviours that fuel this system. These conversations can be awkward for parents, so this book should help create a safe, judgment-free space for curious children to voice questions they've long been afraid to ask, such as, how can I have white privilege if I'm not wealthy? Or if black people can say the N word, why can't I? 
For readers of the adult book, it's worth saying this one is less political than the adult book and has gone through multiple sensitivity reads to ensure it is age appropriate. Um, this is not the jacket that you're seeing on screen. Uh, we are still waiting for something to come from the US um, and we will share it uh, as soon as we have it. Hi everyone, my name is Beth and I'm also a part of the international sales team. Hold on to your towels and definitely don't panic because what we have here is a gorgeous gift edition of Douglas Adams' classic space opera, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. This edition has been beautifully illustrated by superfan Chris Riddell just in time for the 42nd anniversary of the book and we all know how important 42 is in The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. This edition is a gorgeous demi paperback with French flaps. It has foil and embossing on the cover and beautifully detailed black and white illustrations throughout in Chris Riddell's classic style. It's perfect for both new and old fans. So definitely grab your towels and be ready for a nice adventure all throughout space and time. And I'm also presenting to you today Murder on the Safari Star, the fantastic third title in the Adventures on Train series by M.G. Leonard and Sam Sedgman with illustrations by Alyssa Paganelli. In this book, we're off to Southern Africa as Hal and Uncle Nat travel in luxury on the Safari Star all the way from Pretoria to Victoria Falls. But things turn mysterious after a passenger is found dead inside a locked compartment. It's up to Hal and his new friend Winston to find out what's happening. For a book that's been described as Agatha Christie meets Indiana Jones, all I can say is all aboard. <laughs> Hi, so I want to talk to you a little bit about Tokyo Ever After. Um, move over, Mia Thermopolis. Tokyo Ever After is the laugh out loud, feel good, own voices, romance, perfect for fans of The Princess Diaries and Crazy Rich Asians, but dare I say it, it's even funnier. When an American teenager finds out she's the crown princess of Japan, you can expect shenanigans, cringeworthy moments, and a pleasing procession of swoony would-be Prince Charmings. We bought this in a major preempt deal with our sister company in the US and have a comprehensive publishing plan in place to give it some real international welly. We Free the Stars is the epic sequel to the New York Times bestselling We Hunt the Flame by the incredible Hafsa Faisal. It is the conclusion to the Sands of Arawea duology. We Free the Stars published in the US last month and it was an instant New York Times bestseller. Set in a richly detailed magical land inspired by ancient Arabia and with strong female protagonists, Hafsa is committed to shattering stereotypes of the Arab world. It is high quality fantasy writing at, at, at its best, perfect for fans of Lee Bardugo's Shadow and Bone series. And Hafsa herself is a real asset. She's incredibly well connected and has tens of thousands of followers on both Twitter and Instagram. In December, she was featured on the Forbes 30 Under 30 in Art and Style list. And last year, We Hunt the Flame was listed as one of Time's 100 best fantasy books of all time. We Free the Stars is publishing alongside a new cover edition of We Hunt the Flame, both of which have epic new cover looks to position them perfectly in that YA adult crossover space. Me again. Um, Forever Ends on Friday is the gorgeous, heartbreaking and world-shaking new standalone novel from the incredibly talented Justin Reynolds. With his signature delicacy, Justin brilliantly combines high concept, pacey plot with explorations of grief, loss and male friendships while still being able to create pockets of joy with humour and wit. His debut, opposite of always, is being adapted for film by the studio behind The Fault in Our Stars. So that's something to look out for. Guard Your Heart is set in Derry, 18 years after the Northern Ireland peace deal. This gorgeous, heart-stopping debut novel explores the fallout of the troubles for teenagers today, something that isn't often explored, but is that is intimately connected with their understanding of their identity and what they want out of life. 
The writer Sue Divin is a Derry-based writer and peace worker with a master's in peace and conflict studies and a career in community relations. The absolute best person to be writing about this in the most impactful, respectful way possible. At its heart, it's a beautiful, passionate love story about powerful family ties and bridges that are meant to be crossed that will appeal to fans of Derry Girls and Sally Rooney's Normal People. We couldn't be more excited or more proud to be publishing Marcus Rashford's debut children's book. You Are a Champion is the first in an incredible three new partnership. Marcus is known all over the world, not only as Manchester United's iconic number 10, but also as the authentic voice looking to inspire real and positive change in children. And what's so exciting about this partnership is that there's a real opportunity to reach kids from all over the world, and particularly those kids who are least able to access books. You Are a Champion is the first is the perfect first book for Marcus, as it really taps into his ethos of wanting to equip children with everything they need to succeed in life. It's about growth mindset, positivity, and mental resilience, and will show children how thinking differently can help them achieve their goals in almost any aspect of life. It will include stories from Marcus's own childhood and will really focus on championing children, not only to believe in themselves, but also showing them how they can champion others as well. We have brilliant collaborators on board who have backgrounds in sports and child psychology to make sure that this book will be both inspirational and functional. And we're really excited about the illustrator, Cindy Sonoyozi, who was born and raised in Zimbabwe. It will be fun and engaging with lots of infographics, illustrations and a dynamic setting, and there'll be a major comms campaign to accompany publication. Oh, so exciting. And then I just wanted to drop in that you really must look out for some outstanding new books which are coming later in the year. So we have from Lenny Henry some fabulous new middle grade fiction, obviously hilarious, but also full of heart and some unexpected events. From the one and only Lucinda Riley and her son Harry, we have Grace the Christmas Angel, a fabulous new gift book which will be illustrated by Jane Ray I know we have the epic 143 story treehouse keeping children reading and laughing and some of us on our toes about our 13 times table um, from Rob Biddulph we have a wonderful new illustrated series Peanut Jones and obviously you'll know Rob from his wildly successful Draw With Rob online illustration workshops. Um, so we're thrilled to have that online and uh, on coming on board. And then from Francis Harding, coming later in the year, we have Unraveler. And there are videos for most of these titles, from most of these authors in your pack. Um, so I won't tell you too much about Francis's Unraveler, but just to say, it will be rich and gnarly, and we will all be clamoring to read it. And thank you, that's it. Um, thank you so much to all the presenters for coming to present, and thank you everyone at home for watching. Um, I hope you've enjoyed um, these highlights from us. Um, and yeah, we look forward to take, seeing you soon. Take care.